everyone, welcome to Build. I'm Daniel Welsh and I'm very excited to say that we are live from London where we are joined by two actors from one of the West End's hottest shows. Everybody's talking about Jamie. Before we get started, if you're watching at home and have any questions for them, then please tweet us at Build Series LD again. That's Build Series LD again. Or if you're watching this on Facebook Live, then just leave a comment in the video you're currently watching and we'll do our best to get that to them before the end of the interview. But for now, please join me in welcome and the fantastic and very talented Leighton Williams and Hayley Tamadin. <laughs> Get comfortable. Love this. Hi, Hi guys. Hi. Leighton and Hayley, hello and welcome to Bill. Thank you so much Thank for being here. Thank you for having here. us. Um, the first thing I want to know, for people who haven't yet seen Everybody's Talking About Jamie, can you just tell us a little bit about the show, first of all? Go for it. Shall I start? Yeah. So, um, Jamie, everybody's... Oh, someone's phone's on. <laughs> Someone's oh. in on, trouble. Girls, silent mode, what's silent. going on? <laughs> so, Jamie is just um, an average boy from a council estate um, in... In Parsons Cross in Sheffield, and but he's he's special. He's got um oh there we are. Uh, you know he's got a heart of gold. He's very camp. He's out there. He's proud. You know he's a gay kid. He's sixteen years old. He's out and proud. But he basically goes to school. Um and he's got his best friend and he says I want to be a drag queen. He wants to be a drag queen. And the sh the journey of the show is basically um following Jamie on his journey for that quest and. Teachers like <laughs> Miss like Hedge me, ruin it, <laughs> squash that dream sometimes, or try to you know tell tell him to keep it simple, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he goes through his drama with his family, but it's just him trying to find find himself. It's just a story of him trying to find himself, and then he ends up going to prom. I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but um, <laughs> he goes to prom in a dress. But it's based on a real um, story, which was inspired by a documentary, um, Jamie Campbell. So yeah, um, we just touched on Haley, your character, Miss Hedge who I don't want to say is the villain of the piece, but she's not the most likable character, is she? Can you tell us a bit more about her? Yeah, she's not. This is the <laughs> first baddie I've played ever. And you're good at it. Oh, thanks. You are. Thanks. I love how even when you're playing a baddie, this just looks like tons of fun. I know, this. I know. That, I think that's the only point I smile in the show, isn't it? <laughs> that you've got the one picture. Um, it's not that she's a villain. I think it's just the way she's been raised. Um, that she. Here's what I thought my backstory was. When you do a show, um, the director will always say, how do you think your character was created? What's your backstory? And um, when they asked me about Miss Hedge's backstory, I said she was definitely wanting to be a rapper and she auditioned for the very first series of X Factor and she failed. She never got through. And he started laughing. He was like, really? I went, yeah. I said, she, that's why she's now had it drilled into her by her own parents who were probably headmistresses at the school. Mm. You will never make it. So you may as well just keep it real and stick to what you're doing, which is teaching and that's what you'll be good at. And it's kind of how she's been raised, I think. So... I think there's a little bit of her that has a soft spot for Jamie, but she'll never she won't let, show it. She will never let that show. Well, that's no. the thing. At the beginning of the show, it's said quite affectionately to the kids, you know, keep your dreams realistic. And it's only when Jamie starts to really kind of flourish and thrive that she gets a bit more evil. Because I do I throw it in your face a little bit because I, I do test her at one point because I'm like, well, girl, check this. I come in <laughs> all glammed up, scarf wrapped around, glasses on, lashes on, and I'm basically saying, who cares about real mess? Do you know what I mean? I'm going to do me and rightly so, like, do you. Don't, don't let your dreams be squashed, you know? Correct. Uh, Leighton, how much like Jamie do you think you were when you were, say, 16? <laughs> Nothing like <laughs> <laughs> No, it's so true. Like, I, at 16, absolutely I was. Um, and it's so nice to be able to kind of, like, tap into that. Um, but Jamie, it was, Jamie was a bit more innocent. I mean, I, I, well, I think anyway, I had my stuff together. <laughs> I was busy. I was working. I was running around filming this, doing that. You know what I mean? I was just, but... Jamie at 16 was, you know... A bit more sheltered. You know what I mean? A bit yeah. At home. But I'd say I was more Jamie when I was 
11. <laughs> you know, in my council estate in Bury, and that was my life. Uh-huh. So I, I can completely relate to that. But it is hard as a, you know, a 24-year-old man. Can you believe it? <laughs> um, <laughs> playing a 16-year-old, like, it's exhausting. He's running around the town. It's like, my 16-year-olds, they do a lot, like... Energy. I wish everyone could see his little face after the opening number when he turns up stage and he's got his back to the audience and he does all his performing and then he turns and sits. And the way he looks at me, he's like... <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> He's like, his eyeballs are like that. Oh, jumping up and down tables all around. It's I want to give him a hug. I mean, there I you come. are. <laughs> oh, there I am, yes. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't look like an easy move, Leighton. I'm not going to lie to you. We've got to get a few legs in there, you know. Uh, we've already had a question on Facebook from Marcus. Um, is there anything either of you do to help yourselves get into character before a show? Actually, I, there is one thing I do. Oh. This is not to sound cheesy or anything. Mm. I try my hard. This is ridiculous. I'm going to tell you. I try my hardest not to, because um, I'm really sociable, and we all stand backstage in a little huddle together before we go on. Mm. And Leighton tells all his stories, and we all giggle. I try to remove myself from it a bit earlier than they do, so I'm not having so as much fun. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. thought you were just being rude. No, I'm not <laughs> being rude. <laughs> I actually then, had a conversation the other day. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then watch, no, watch tonight. I, I pace, I pace up and down just, just really slowly because I am nothing like Miss Hedge in real life. Uh-huh. So for me to actually find that moment of like she's quite still and prim, and you know, I do have to kind of rein it in a bit before I go on, otherwise, I'd be as mad as this one. <laughs> Are you enjoying playing a character who's so different from yourself yes. and different to the other characters you've played before? Yeah, I'm loving it. It is completely different to you know, I'm always kind of the good girl, you know, or the funny one, and this is neither of those <laughs> things. So, yeah, I am enjoying it. It's a challenge for me, and that's why we do this, right? Yeah. Uh, Leighton, you are mm-hmm. the third actor to play Jamie, is that right, in the West End? You, yes. Yeah, second let's... officially. But okay. Yes. We'll um, what do you feel like you're bringing to the role this time around? Um, I think as actors, we all bring our own flair to it anyway. But um, my best friend is actually John McCree, who played the um, original Jamie. Oh, right. So, but this is, it's all love, no shade there. Like, it's just, I've been on the journey with him. So now I kind of stepped into it knowing a lot about the show. But you know, everyone's saying, you know, got big shoes to be filled, but it's not, it wasn't me coming to try and fill shoes. It's like me making my own. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. Like I'm coming to do my thing, put my stamp on it. And when in the creative process with the director and the creators and stuff, it wasn't like, all right, and we do this, this, this. It was like, try out the scene, see how you feel. Like, I don't even think I stand or do or anything really what John used to do. I really just like, I, fi- I think I found it for myself. Find my 16 year old version of Jamie. Because Jamie's a real person, but what John played wasn't that Jamie. Of course. What I yeah. did was too, isn't. So I think it's really exciting because it feels like a new, completely new creative process. So I'm just bringing, I don't know what it is. I can't Your really comment. Your own stamp. Yeah, I'm yeah. coming to comment, but I think I'm just bringing my own moments to it. <laughs> Do you think that's kind of because you've got a relationship with John outside of the show, you kind of don't want to copy him because you know him? <laughs> As an actor, as well as as a person. Yeah, one that, but also copying is just not. Well, of cute. course, you, yeah. do you know what I mean. Yeah, you don't really, you don't do that as an actor, really. It's, You've got to do your own thing. You have to just put your stamp on it, and that's what's so wonderful, especially about this director, um, Jonathan Butterall, that we've had. That's what he wanted for so much from us. Put your little stamp on it. Put your mark on it. Mm. Um, and that's what everybody's had the chance exactly. to do, which has been really wonderful. Yeah, it's our show. Like, I was that kid, like I said. So all I have to do is tap in and think, what was I running around doing when I was, you know, back in my council estate in Manchester? Like, And I, I'm bringing that to it. So it's a completely different feel. It's a different story. Um, obviously, you knew the show quite well beforehand. Hayley, yeah. how about you? Did you? Were you a big fan of the show before you signed up for it? How familiar with it were you? So um, the, the way I ended up in the show, uh, I, a friend of mine is called um, James Gillen. He plays one of the drag queens in the show. And I bumped into him outside the theatre one day. I'd been for an audition for something else. And he said, come and see the show tonight. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, sure, I've got nothing to do. And I just went along and watched it. And... That night we came out and I bumped into Dan Gillespie Sells, who wrote the show. Oh, wow. Who I've known for five years, but I've not seen him for five years. Right. So I was like, oh, my God, I've just watched your show and it was amazing. (laughs) And he was like, really? And I was like, I would love to be in a show like this. And he went, well, as it stands, we're having a cast change. And I went, "Yes, really? And he went, yeah, why don't you come? And I was like, "Um, okay. And so I went and met with them all. 
and that that's that story I ended that's up That's very um, serendipitous, isn't it's it? Mental. That's how my life is. It like <laughs> really runs on that, you know? I love it. Yeah. Can I ask you about the rehearsal process for a show like this? Because obviously when it's already on with a different cast, what's it like rehearsing? Oh, it's quite hard because we didn't, I don't think we had that much time. Like this is a big show for me. I had to learn a lot and I'd known that I had the part for quite a long time. So I was asking for the script and stuff. Um, it was like a long time coming for me. So before we basically had, I think they had three weeks, but officially two weeks yeah. rehearsals it was, altogether. Yeah. It was two weeks rehearsal, really. And then the final week was what you call tech week, which is uh, where you do dress rehearsals and the sound checks. And, you know, we talk about the lights and all of those things. So you usually get about four weeks, so maybe five for a brand new show you know and we kind of got two to three weeks and we also see the people that you can see in the pictures half of those people were already in the show already right so we couldn't rehearse with them a lot of the time because they were mm. already in the show so it was like you were doing things with, and the director would say now there's four people over there so just pretend that they're there <laughs> and four people over there, and i was like oh it my was, god oh, that sounds like such a lot yeah. yes and i was doing a show in sheffield actually which was great because i was working on my accent and stuff <laughs> but um I said, listen, guys, we're gonna, you're going to have to send someone over. Like, we, we basically started rehearsals prior to that to so I could learn some choreography at least because I went, I can't be putting the show together in two weeks. It's a lot. So at least when I came, I had, like, the choreography down so I could just concentrate on everything else. So that's how it kind of worked. Um, the show has obviously been really, really popular with kind of theatre fans in the last couple of years since it came out. It's had five Olivia nominations, which is obviously very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, does that put pressure on you when you're uh, signing up for it? Ooh, a little bit. Yeah, I was a bit shook. I mean, a lot <laughs> shook, actually. <laughs> yeah. I think it's different. I think for you, for Leighton, you know, it, it, you will play t playing a lead role in a show, you will always feel that slight pressure. And pressure. Uh, it, it's just a natural thing that you have, but you need to see him play it because he's just <laughs> oh, stop it, stop phenomenal. It. <laughs> phenomenal. What has the reaction been like from fans so far? I think from what I've read and from what I've seen, everyone's been so supportive and kind of lapped it up. Um, at the, the month up until um, we kind of opened, I kind of had like a detox on social media because it was just like a lot. I was like, I, yeah, yeah. I just need to just learn my part. But since being back and everything, it's just love. Like everyone's yeah. been so supportive. Everyone's been behind it. And it is scary, yes, because people expect you to be cute. So you need to be cute. Mm -hmm. You need to come through. You need to I've, slay. I've yeah. Do you know what I mean? Seen a, I've never known a musical with a fan base like Jamie. Yeah. There is people that w that spoke to me on the first night of our show that said they'd seen it 275 times. And this is the first time they'd seen it with a new cast and that they will just keep coming to see. And also the well, real... Well, that's what you want to hear, I guess, yeah, isn't it? Real... Not this is the last time I'll be coming. <laughs> the, real hardcore, you know? the real hardcore fans of the show will tell you what they think. And I loved that. Mm. You know, they'll... Yeah, some of them are like, yeah, you know, you seemed a bit nervous, like you were just fine with me, <laughs> but you, you've, you've, you're getting there. I'm like, all right, thanks, yeah. you want to email me the notes? Do you know what I mean, girl? Give me a minute. Do you know what I mean? You've seen the show more than me. You probably know the lines more than me. <laughs> I know. Like, I think the second week, um, they had, what's it called when there's... Um, Not blind they had a, um, like a signed performance, but they have the there's like two boards either side, um, and for anybody with any um, disabilities and things like that, so they can they read can, it. You can actually right, yeah, read yeah. the but script. Girl, I don't even know my lines yet. Do you know what I mean? It's me too. <laughs> can I have a break? I, I was like, he oh, was I looking think... at his own lines on the, on the board. <laughs> I was like, I think I've got this line back to front. Very paraphrased. I was like, oh my god, this is there. But the funniest is when we when we make little mistakes because I made one last night and we were nearly. You said, she said, he said, Ms. Ms. You, you like did a repeat I word. Was meant, I was meant to say, I'm sorry to call you in like this, Mrs. New. But now do your impression. I'm sorry to call you in this, Ms. 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 New. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been more What do you moment. do when you have a moment like that? Do you just have to... Don't look at each other. Also, Don't you have to bite your cheeks. I can't look at him. Because unless I get severely angry at him, I can't look at him because he makes me giggle. It's those eyes. Can't do it. Can't look at him. You just have to do that. <laughs> An act. <laughs> um, let me ask one thing that a lot of kind of people have got behind the show for, and why I think why it's got such a big fan base is because it is such a diverse show. I mean, looking at this poster here, mm -hmm. all kinds of diversity as Isn't well. That even wonderful? everything. Well, Isn't that's that what I was going to ask. You must feel really kind of proud to be part of a show that's championing that. I, it's honestly, it makes me want to cry a little bit when I see it. It's, it's fab. Absolutely amazing how Hopefully multicultural everyone. our yeah. cast is. You can see that and see yourself 
everybody can see themselves in that. Like someone could relate to a character there. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's, it's wonderful, beautiful. really is. But um, people talk a lot about kind of representation on TV and in film. Do you feel like the theatre is catching up to that? Or do you feel like it's always been ahead? That's a hard question. It is hard, but I think in theatre you can get away with it a little bit more, like things like blind casting and colour blind casting and stuff. I think that's a little bit more done because on TV, in a movie, if you had like two white parents and there was a black child, people would be like, what's going on? But in theatre, it's people kind of just let it be which is great because I can keep getting jobs, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think I th that's what's so great about this show as well is that, you know, if you look, there is this someone that everyone can relate to. Um, at the centre of the show as well, it's kind of, it's about community, it's about friendship, it's mm -hmm. about kind of growing up, but also at the heart of it is drag. Mm. And, late, and I saw you in Rent a couple of years oh, ago yes. as Angel, so obviously this isn't your first it's try. It's my first time. Um, what is kind of both of your relationship with drag? <laughs> What's your relationship to drag? There's a line in the show where Pretty says, am I your fag hag? And I think I said that to my gay best friend at the age of 10. So you're relating as You've well. You've always been. I've always, always been. In fact, the, the drag queens in this show say to me constantly, you are a gay man in a woman's body, <laughs> Hayley Tamadon. And I think I am. Yeah. I've just always been like a RuPaul's Drag Race fan, so I love all of that. And it's so fab. Do you know what? You d you don't actually see Jamie in drag on stage, apart from, I don't want to ruin it, apart from that final moment. Yes. In the right one. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, you, you it's, that has to be a moment. Well, it is. It's a build up, isn't yeah. it? So. Um, but, but the basics of the story is he ends up, you know, just being able to say, as well as being a drag queen and doing this, I, I should just be able to wear a dress and be proud of that. And you know what I mean? And, it doesn't matter whether I'm playing me, 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 which is his drag name, or I'm being Jamie, I should be able to express myself however yeah. I want. And that's the heart of the show, I think. Um, Hayley, your yes. kind of career over the last few years, we've seen you do so many different things. You've been on TV, you've been done reality TV, you've done Dancing on Night, you've done theatre. Where do you feel kind of the most comfortable? I feel really blessed that I've been lucky enough to mix all those things up because, you know, that's... Um, it's. it's not everyone gets to do that, but actually, the older I get, I'm very comfortable in front of a camera <laughs> <laughs> because being on stage terrifies me a oh, little really? bit. Oh, really? Yeah. It, I love it. I've, I've grown up on the stage. You know, I started from being a baby. You know, my mom said I'd, I was doing jazz hands when I came out the womb. So, you know, it's been all my life, but there is, um, I love theatre so much. I love it. There's something very magical about being on a set on a film set, on a TV set. You know, Leighton's done some telly as well. Yeah. It is it, uh, reading different scripts every day, you know, portraying that character. It's it's magical for me. So I guess I'm comfortable doing that. More nervous being on stage. Because people don't scream at you from the audience. Correct. <laughs> or swear at you. That's what happened the other week. As How much happened? swearing do you have from the audience? Someone told her to F off the other week in one of our scenes. Well, at least joke. you know you're doing a good job. Exactly. I mean, but but still, you'd miss head, rude. you hope. <laughs> It's not cool. It wasn't cool. No. It's etiquette, guys. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Leighton. You are. Thanks. How, I mean, <laughs> with moments like that, how do you kind of recover from that? Are you taken aback or do you just have to keep? Leighton's little eyeballs, honestly. I, after it happened, we, I think neither of us blinked. We were staring at each other's eyes and I was thinking, is, did that keep just going, happen? Did that just? And I just waited and, until everybody had either stopped laughing or some people were moaning at her because she was on her phone as well. And um, and so we just sat and we held our look with mm. each other. We did not move, literally like this. <laughs> until That's you the thing about live theatre. Keep, keep. And going. then once they'd all be start, you know, stop laughing and stuff, then I carried on. But inside, I was crying like a child, <laughs> and I was like that. Oh my god! Oh my god! But you know, you just you deal with it. Um, I think the good thing with a show like Jamie, though, is that you know that you've got um, the fan base there, so you know oh. that at least they're going to have your back in moments like that. They were so supportive. Yeah. They were so supportive. And actually, a lot of them uh, afterwards at Stage Door apologised on, on that woman's behalf, which was so sweet, even though, yeah. you know, they all said, we're so sorry that that moment ru it was ruined for you. And I thought, wow, OK, that's really amazing. That's that's what you want, isn't it? Um, we've had actually another question on Facebook from Stephen, who says, is there any dream role that you would love to play and why? Do you know what? I get asked that question all the time, but I never tell people because then you'll know if I didn't get it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be telling you all my secrets. and I've never thought of that. I go to audition for it, don't book, and you're like, oh, didn't get it. Didn't get it. <laughs> So I'm keeping them up here, girl. Do you know what I mean? That's for me to know and you to find out if I do it. <laughs> Sorry about it. It's just one of them, isn't it? I bring it into my own universe. And then if it 
comes manifesting. to manifesting. Envisage. Yeah. Manifesting. Yeah. But if I put it out there, oh, oh it's, just, it's just too much. Whereas I'm completely the opposite and I tell everyone everything <laughs> all the time. No, I can't. I can't. I put it all out there. Go on, You're man. really good. That's really good. I used to have a friend like you at school. She never told anyone anything and then it had happened for her. When the bookings come through, you'll yeah. see. And then I'd be like, did you get it? No, I didn't get it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just too much. Too much rejection in this industry. I don't need everyone knowing too. So I'll keep it to myself. <laughs> On that um, good advice <laughs> note, unfortunately, we've got to wrap it up. Oh, um, we could do this all night. Come on. Well, we'll, we'll go back here. We'll, have, we'll, we'll keep going. Uh, everybody's like, everybody's talking about Jamie is on at the Apollo Theatre until the 28th of September. Um, and stick with us. We'll be back at 5.30 talking about the brand new TV drama, Baptiste. But right now, please give it up for the fantastic Leighton Williams and Hayley Tamadin. Oh, wow.